In this video, I'd like to talk about three-axis rest machining. Rest machining in three-axis is similar to two-axis rest machining, except that you're removing remaining stock from surfaces rather than profiles. The part you see on the screen has been machined with a step reduction milling roughing pass. We're going to follow this pass up with a steep shallow pass to get the part close to final shape. After running a steep shallow tool path over the part using a half inch ball nose end mill, this is the result. You can see we've machined the part to finish dimensions in the gray area, but have material left in the corners where the tool was too large to remove the remaining stock. What we're going to do next is use a quarter inch ball nose end mill to try to clean up the corners. To create a rest machining pass, the first thing we do is move up to NC down to three axis, and then down to rest machining. I'm going to choose the visible surfaces to cut, and then we see our three axis rest machining menu. Right at the top we have a select reference tool button. The reference tool is the tool that you used in a previous operation to cut the part. In my previous operation I had a half inch diameter four flute ball nose end mill on a steep shallow cut. Once SurfCam understands that we used a half inch diameter ball nose in the previous operation, it can calculate how much material is left on the part. This material will be removed with the second tool that we'll choose later. It's important to realize that rest machining can only calculate the material left by a ball nose end mill and can only remove material with a ball nose end mill. If we look at our Select Reference Tool button, you can see that the only tool available to us is a ball nose end mill, both for reference tools and for cutting tools. If I go down a little bit farther here, you can see we have parameters for rapid plane, XY stock to leave, Z stock to leave, boundaries, check surfaces, etc. These variables all work the same way they do in previous SurfCam menus. The next thing I'll do is move up to our Tool tab. Click on Tool number 1 and we're ready to program the rest machining tool. If I click on the Select Tool button, once again you see that we only have a ball nose end mill available to us. I'm going to choose a quarter inch diameter four flute ball nose end mill to remove the material and then click OK. Remember that your tool number, length offset, and diameter offset should be numbers that are appropriate for your program. Next I'm going to go to Cut Control. Under Cut Control the first thing you see is Step Down and then Step Over. This is a steep shallow type operation. Our Step Down is how much we're stepping down on the steeper sections. I'm going to change this to 20 thousandths. Our Step Over is what we're stepping over on the shallower sections. I'm going to also change that to 20 thousandths. Our steep threshold determines what's steep and what's shallow. Anything over 80 degrees is considered steep. Anything less than 80 degrees is considered shallow. So that will determine whether we have a step down or a step over. Another important item is the maximum material threshold. This is the maximum amount of material that can be removed with a three-axis rest machining pass. Right below that is the minimum amount of material that can be removed. These numbers are variable. We can also choose to machine both the steep and shallow regions, the steep only or the shallow only. For now I'm going to choose steep and shallow. Everything else looks good so I'm going to click OK down at the bottom and let's see what we get. Here's our finished tool path. If we zoom up on it, it's important to realize one thing. The tool path follows a looping pattern going around the part and collapsing from the outside edges inward. This makes sure that you ease into the material gradually rather than burying the tool all at once. I'm going to zoom out a little bit here and we're going to run this part in verification. When we continue the simulation and verify, you'll be able to see the looping pattern that I was talking about earlier. Here we start at the outside edges of the cut and work our way inwards.
Here's the rest machining operation after verification has been completed. It's important to know that you can follow up this quarter inch ball nose tool with a smaller tool if you have a smaller radius to get into. Remember once again though you can only use ball nose end mills in three axis rest machining.